I would like to welcome you to this maiden edition of this beautiful program, Facts and Figures, coming to you on African Broadcasting Network, ABN Television, Channel 15.9, Houston, Texas. My name is Converter O. Adeyemo. I will be your host on this fantastic program. This program aims to be an educative and enlightening program where we will be discussing sensitive issues ranging from politics, home and abroad, immigration issues, security matters, health issues, insurance, financial stability, and many more. You can see that this program is loaded all for you. On this program, we will be bringing professionals from different fields to discuss different issues to educate you. This program, Facts and Figures, will be coming every Saturday. 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are doing anything in the house, note it. You have to watch this program. Don't miss it. It's going to be 8 p.m. on ABN Television that this program will be coming up. For adverts and you have a question or you, all, you want to sponsor this program, you are highly welcome. You can even send questions. Maybe you have questions that you want to even ask relating to all the above mentioned uh, issues, ranging from politics, like I said earlier on. You can send your question ahead to us. We will definitely trash those questions with our professionals. So when you send your questions, we'll look into them. And when we have uh, people who can talk about them, we'll ask them those questions. And you'll, you'll get your answers. And you can move on in whatever you want to do. But today on this program, I would like to let you know that our discussion will be based on this last concluded AKT election. But before I move on, Concerning that, I have to say a big congratulations, a big one congratulations to the winner of the AKT election in Nigeria, Kayo De Fayemi. I have to say a big one to you there. Congratulations. And today on the show, we'll be looking at everything that surrounds this election. The, the fire share claiming that the governor of Kfashi, claiming that a lot of things happened that he's not really happy with. Uh, the role of INEC, the role of uh, the citizenry who actually went to cast their votes. We are going to really look at it. Uh, is it really fair? Is the, is the election really free and fair? But before we look into that, I would like you to know the guest we have in the house. A political analyst is no other person than Adekunle Adelaide. He's the one with me on this program that we're going to look into this AKT issues together. You are welcome, sir. Thanks for having me once again. Yes. Um, if we look at this AKT, just completed AKT election, um, can we say, can, do we see any issue of Togri at all in this election? Well, thank you, uh, moderator. We're here in diaspora. But uh, all the time, we, we hear news, we see news of political thuggery in elections in Nigeria. Will this last one be different? Of course not. And as long as we have that, that means that, 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 means that election is, ne is never free and fair. And what do I mean by this? In a in 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 situation whereby Political, uh, the thugs of a political of, of an aspirant of a, of a candidate, uh, they keep uh, harassing the electorate in order to take the, receive their votes, and vice versa, the opposing candidate harassing the other side. So, do we have a free and fair election there? No. Um, um, there are other things that goes with that election to make it free and fair, apart from political thuggery and all that, but. Thuggery is a major aspect of elections that we have to eradicate in Nigeria. Uh, this thuggery, obviously, does it have any impact on the election itself? Of course, absolutely. It does have impact on the election because um, do you think I'll go out to vote where I see cutlasses, guns, charms? It has, it has, it has, of course, it has effect. It does not make. Those of us who really want the right candidate to win an election, to, to win that election. And may, maybe the question you're going to ask me is this. Maybe you're going to ask me how to, to start, stop political talking in Nigeria, right? We'll still get to that. We'll get to that. We'll okay. get to that. Of course, be, coming back to your question, of course, uh, thought is inevitable to any election. 
not just in Nigeria, all over Africa, the world over, we will never have the right candidate to win an election. Now, if we look at it, uh, before the election, we can see a kind of drama that played out on the governor of Ekiti, that's um, Fire Shea. The incumbent uh, governor. Yes. governor. If you look at now, do we say, what can we say should be, what should be the relationship between, between the federal incumbents, the federal incumbents and the state incumbents? What should be the relationship? Uh, as, 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 it, as, as a constitution states, that's what we have. Federal level, the, the federal government should be separate from the state government. We, there shouldn't be any, in, uh, there can be interaction where necessary. But in terms of election, there shouldn't be anything whatsoever between the federal, there shouldn't be any like um, competition between the federal government and the plan. Say, for instance, uh, the federal government has a stake in that the state election. But that does not mean they should muscle in and make sure their candidate wins an election. And that, would be wrong. that means the right hand still does not win an election. It's what it's, it is multifaceted. I told you earlier that there are several reasons why the right candidate does not usually win an election. In a situation whereby the federal government has a candidate, they have a choice. It, it should be left for the states and the indigenous of that states to, to, to choose who and what party they want to win an, an election. Now, if you look at it, what do you think should be done concerning this talk of the thing? What should be the solution? What are the chances we have that during election, this talk of the thing will not come to play? Okay. Every country, they use pivotal moments, either to change a law or to bring in a new one. Let us go back to what happened a few months ago in Kwara where a known political thug of, it has been alleged that the political thug of, of, of the, the Senate President, who I am sure the Senate President sent him to rob the bank. I am sure the, the, the Senate President did not send him to go kill about 33 people, including nine policemen, including pregnant women. As reported. As reported. Now, I see no reason why the federal government, the, the legislation, the, the, the House of Reps uh, and the, the, the two House of, uh, the, the Congress, let me just use Congress, can use that moment, that pivotal moment, to enact a law to stop future occurrence of political authority. So, how, what do I mean by this? If you enact a law whereby any candidate use of political talk or thugs, as is as often the case, to harass, to maim, to kill the supporters of the other candidate. They should be bad from further contesting any election in Nigeria. That would, do, that would be a deterrent against political thuggery. That's, it's, a very simple, it's a very simple situation. It's a very simple idea. But we have to have the political goodwill. Nigerian politicians have, they can have to have the political goodwill to be able to do this put this into play in our laws. I mean, they claim to have the love of Nigeria at heart. They have to bring all the simple and common sense ideas into play so that if candidate A does not use uh, to, to ask candidate B, there will be, free, uh, be a fairer and freer election. So that's one aspect of free and fair election that I was talking to you about. We go on commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Items you want to bring from Nigeria, such as clothes, shoes, packaged foodstuff, or would you like to start a business in the US importing items from Nigeria to sell in stores like eBay and Amazon, where lots of people are making good money now? Well, 
Starting from March 1st, 2018, Ship to Niger will be shipping from Nigeria to the US for as low as $50. And most importantly, we will deliver to your doorstep anywhere in the USA within seven to 10 business days. So by now you are asking, what do I need to do? It's simple. Drop off your item at our Lagos office or you can call us to schedule a pickup from anywhere in Nigeria. Our team will professionally pack your items, help with export documentation to ensure that they are never seized by the US customs as many people face now. You can even use our US warehouse which is over 23,000 square foot of space to store your items for as long as you need them. Or you can have us dispatch to all your customers as they order from you from all over the US. We have the experience you need. So call us on the number on your screen. Are you looking for a more challenging and fulfilling career, not just another job? Do you have a passion for helping others and making a difference in people's lives? At Belltech Career Institute, we take you where you want to go. Choose from our list of exceptional healthcare programs, including nurse aid, medication aid, patient care technician, medical assistant, CPR, pharmacy technician, HESI, ESL, math and English, and CNA 24 hours continuing education. Our vocational nurse program can be completed in just one year and is designed to prepare individuals for a state certified nursing career. You can be sure to receive quality educational services with our experienced instructors who will help guide you to reach your goals. Register now to get started on fulfilling your dreams of helping others. Bell Tech Career Institute is fully approved by the Texas Board of Nursing and Texas Workforce Commission and is also approved to train veterans. Texas Workforce Commission is available for partial aid. Bell Tech Career Institute, located at 14602 Presidio Square Boulevard. Call 832-770-0750 or 713-636-2659. Bell Tech Career Institute will take you where you want to go. Discover the uniqueness in the entertainment industry. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, is now the pace setter in the industry. Do you want to advertise your products and services? Count on us. We will do it much more than your expectations. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, will deliver quick and prompt services. Our quality and clarity stands us out when it comes to delivering quality broadcasting. Our staffs are hardworking and versatile in the specific field of office. Our environment is so conducive and we are open to all. We also give advice on how to run your business profitably, African Broadcasting Network is situated at 9894 Business Street, Suite 875, Houston, Texas 77036. Contact phone 281 652 8396 and 832 490 8203. Website www.abntvnetwork.com. ABN celebrating Africans' rich cultural heritage. Welcome back on the program. It's still facts and figures on ABN television. And with me today is still the same man I've been talking together for long. His name is Adekunle Adelaye. Now, let's begin from where we stopped before we went on break. The success of Coyote Fire Me, are we saying is as regards of we having APC at the federal at the center? Because people believe that there's this power of incumbents, and even the former governor was alleging that he was not given the proper room to, you know, for his candidate to support his candidate and all of that. Do we say this, this success or this achievement, this victory of Kyle Fanyemi is as a result of we having APC at the central, I mean, at the federal government level? Well, with regards to what has happened before in the past, I think that is a factor. But some, some people are actually saying that. I think that, but some people are actually saying that is what, that, that was what happened. And uh, it's a shame that, uh, well, it is all right to have vested interest in who wins an election, but does that mean we should use our power, our position, to muscle in and, and, and therefore make our own candidate win rather than people's choice. 
in as much as we don't have the people's choice as the elected candidate, then that means uh, we don't have the right candidate. That means people who voted just voted in vain. What we therefore have is selection, not an election. Hmm. Now, if that comes to play, that comes to the question, my next question. Uh, if we say we are having qu selection and not election, are we saying INEC is independent now? Uh, any parastatal, any institution under the federal government is never free, yeah, free, quote unquote. Uh, INEC, has, as far as I'm concerned, INEC has never been free because it's often said, he who pay the piper, the piper dictates the chain. Yeah. So, and it has been meant, it has been deliberately left at, in, that, in that way, so that uh, the federal government can always use uh, the, 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 their office to manipulate whoever, whatever they want to happen. We, we're going to have to have an independent INA. We're going to have to create a law whereby these people, nobody, nobody selects the, I mean, it, it, maybe at some point the federal government can always select the chair of the INA. But what about the staff, the lower cadres and all that? I'm not so sure how that works in Nigeria. I'm going to have to make my research and come to the conclusion of how they go about doing that. But as far as, I, as, far as I'm concerned, in the, when you always introduce the Nigerian factor, things of that nature will always happen. And you remember what I told you about the police reform and all that, and corruption? The system is corrupt. We're going to have to change the system. We're going to have to make the system almost foolproof. Even though I know there's no full, full, full system. But that will reduce drastically the influence of whoever, whatever political party is at the top. Hmm. Now, what's, when can we say INEC is independent? What are what must we see that will say, yes, INEC, they are not independent? At least we are talking, we are seeing from the diaspora right now. And we know how things are being done in a, in, in a, in a, in a westernized economy. Our elections has been carried out, uh, you know. Now, I want to say INEC, they are independent indeed. What and what must come to play? Uh, I have a few things to say about that. Number one, onto the federal government, a few days into our election, stop invading the state with police until money has no place in official elections until uh, the voters themselves. I mean, I mean, when I say money doesn't have any role to play, I mean giving INEC officials of the state, bribing them and all that. Then number two, until voters, you remember I told you we have problem of followership in Nigeria, until they stop collecting money from these politicians, until they stop uh, until, they, until they stop collecting money from all these politicians, that's way, that's the only time they have a free and fair election. That is when, especially I think, can be free, can be a fair umpire in deciding who wins elections in Nigeria. Now, if you look at the incumbent governor that's identified she of um, Ikita State, um, if you look at it, he has said so much about the federal government attacking the president, the office of the president. Uh, that's uh, Mohamed Buhari. Mm -hmm. Now, for he, they've lost, his own party has lost the election right now. APC are coming on board right now. Kayode, I fired me. Do you think it is proper if he has been brought to book for all he has said to the office of the president? All, all he has said? Yes. I think the question is, did he say the right thing? Did he, did he actually criticize the federal government or Buhari himself? Was it a fair criticism? Did all those things, yeah, I like the Buhari did. Did Buhari actually do, do those things? Does it mean if our president did something wrong, we can, we can no longer criticize him? On the other hand, who is Fayoshi? Is he a comedian in chief? Is he a rational human being? Is he, did he actually do the same? Didn't he actually do the same thing in accusing the federal government of doing? These are the questions we're going to have to ask ourselves. We're going to say, okay, if it is right or wrong, 
for him to have said, said the things he said against Buhari. Um, uh, because, they, come on. It, will I listen to Fire Shea if he's on the United States? Probably not. Will I believe in the things that he has, he has alleged? Maybe some of those things. Uh, will I do it the way he did it? Of course not. Because I, if we, if we need our countries, our states, to be ruled, to, 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 start, to, to be ruled by decent human beings. Is Fire Shea a decent human being? I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I, I, I don't believe it's a human being. Now, if you look at this past, uh, this just completed the election right now. 2019 is around the corner. What, do you have any kind of fear come 2019 about the forthcoming election? I am constantly in fear of what will happen in Nigeria in 2019. Uh, in a previous interview, I just, you did ask me about change. Well, well, if uh, Nigeria actually got the change, I told you Nigeria got short changed. Nigerians are tired. Nigerians are tired. They are hungry. They are fearful. They want something fresh. Buhari has come with something. It, is, it, has, it has come to, 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 to stop corruption in Nigeria. But like I told you in the first interview, you cannot do beyond your capacity. That is what Buhari knows how to do, to bring orderliness, to bring uh, a sense of uh, doing things the right way, so to speak. And he had, can you introduce a, a development that project? To Nigeria and Nigerians? I, I don't think so. But if you look at the field at the moment, there are several candidates who claim to know what is wrong with Nigeria. I've listened to a few of them. I'm not going to name names, but uh, I wanted to that I believe can actually do something. However, however, if Wari can, can humble himself and listen to Nigerians and, and hear what they have to say, Talk to a few of us who have ideas of how to move the nation forward. At the end of the day, it's going to be his glory. It's going to be his legacy. Then you probably have a chance of winning the next election. Before we wrap up, before we call it uh, a day on the program, uh, I would like to us to just look into people, politicians coming to the diaspora to talk to people here in the diaspora, in the US, in the UK, and other parts of the world, seeking for funds to run election and all that. Number one is, is, is it proper for someone to be aspiring for a position and coming to the diaspora to seek for fund to run the election? Then something similar to it, what do the people in diaspora have a role to play when it comes to election at home? Oh, absolutely. You see, if you're in Nigeria and you live in Kokoma land, you have a role to play in what happens in your Home country. If you're in Nigeria and you think there's a need to change things in Nigeria, we, you see, I often I, I believe this. Uh, one 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 of my uh, friends from the north once said this: that in order to give, in order to effect change, you need change in your pocket. Now, is it legitimate where you get the change from? That is the question you should have to ask. Is it legitimate to come to diaspora and ask for funds from us that live in Nigeria? As long as we are Nigerians, of course, it's okay. Any candidate, irrespective of uh, what political party, there is only wrong for them to come down here and ask for help. Or would you rather ha make them have like uh, what they call the uh, political godfather, who now dictates what they do or don't do when they get to power? See, democracy. When when Obama ran for president back in two thousand and eight. Uh, every single person, irrespective of where they are, as long as they are Americans, they gave to, they, they, they funded our election. That's what we should have in Nigeria too. Now, if you look at it, the Zuni system, which the Godfather is in a position in the system right now, okay, it goes to the north, it goes to the south. What if at a point in time we're about to go for an election, the best candidate they can get is not coming from the zone, they will actually, they will zone it to, are we saying they must be forced? Uh, do, you, do you think this is right, this zoning system? <laughs> it, is, it is totally wrong. It, it is the wrong, it, it's a wrong posture to take. Does it mean if I have, just like you said, it, it is wrong. It, it does not help anybody. The best candidate must, does not necessarily have to come with, uh, from a particular zone. 
So, say for instance, the Green Eagles of Nigeria that played at the World Cup, majority of those players are from the southeastern part of Nigeria. Imagine if you had introduced zoning system. You have five Yoruba, five Hausa, five Yubu, four Little uh, uh, Belt, and uh, all the geopolitical zones, just because that's where they are from. What sense would that make? As long as they are representing the interest of Nigeria, one Nigeria, that's all that matters. This idea of zoning system is, is a complete waste of our time. Is a complete disaster. Any candidate can come from anywhere. It shouldn't. It shouldn't matter who, where you are born, or who you are. As long as you have the interests of Nigeria at heart, you should be able to contest an election. Now, what should be our facts and feet though? If we're going to get 2019 election right, we've seen what has played out in Ekiti. Mm -hmm. What are the things we must see before the election and on the, on the on the day of the election that we know that yes, we we are ready to get it right this time around. It, the predicate is always law and order first. Law and order. This government still had a chance. They still have about uh, eight months before they leave the office. Eight, I'm not sure. I'm not very good with mathematics. Uh, even if they have one week, they can change the system. They can start a system. Wait. What are the, the political? I always come back to the political. Form. Any, 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 any government that does not change law and order in Nigeria will always get it wrong. No matter how, if it's if, the, if a child the roads in Nigeria, uh, provide infrastructures, uh, do this, do that, and there is no change in that institution, law and order, we will never get it right. Law and order is, is the way to go. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Adekunle Adele, for You're coming on the program. Um, that is what, all we can take today on this program, Facts and Figure on ABN Television Channel 15.9. You still have to join us same time, same station next week because we'll be bringing you... Can, can I just indulge you for a few seconds? Okay. Uh, remember I, I told you in all the interviews I've had with you that uh, the, the problem of Nigeria is not about, it's not, it's not less of leadership but more of followership. We need... Nigerians to we need, we, they need to be educated on how to behave because we are more of the problems. The, the, the followers are more of the problems than the leadership. So we need to go to that line too. We need, and and I, like I told you, I had a program to change all that. If only Nigerians would listen to me. Thanks. That's all we can take on this program today on Facts and Figure, ABN Television Channel 15.9. Same time, same station next week. Join us. We are bringing on the professional who will discuss issues that, will, that has been bothering your mind and bringing solution and answer. I know today you've learned a lot and you've been able to take a stand and have a facts and figures on what to do to actually do things right. My name is Convert Ao Adeyemo. Join us same time next week. Take care. Remain cool. Discover the uniqueness in the entertainment industry. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, is now the pace setter in the industry. Do you want to advertise your products and services? Count on us. We will do it much more than your expectations. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, will deliver quick and prompt services. Our quality and clarity stands us out when it comes to delivering quality broadcasting. Our staffs are hardworking and versatile in the specific field of office. Our environment is so conducive and we are open to all. We also give advice on how to run your business profitably. African Broadcasting Network is situated at 9894 Eastern Street, Suite 875, Houston, Texas 77036. Contact phone 281 652 8396 and 832 490 8203. Website www.abntvnetwork.com. ABN celebrating Africans' rich cultural heritage.